Hey, everybody. Good morning. We've got one minute until start time. It's nice to see your faces this morning. The only thing that would be better is if I was physically with you. Um, but I do love, I mean, I love the convenience of this format. You can all be in your own classrooms um, and you don't have to be in one central location. So there's that. Okay, so it is 1045 and I have a ton of information for y'all this morning. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'm Selena Schwartzfager with the Mississippi Council on Economic Education. And um, I recognize some of your faces, um, but then there are some new faces as well. And uh, I appreciate y'all being here with me this morning. What I was asked to do for this first session is just to talk to you about the Mississippi Council on Economic Education and let you know what all, all the resources are that we have that you can take advantage of as educators. And then I've got another session after lunch where we'll take a deeper dive into the student competitions. So um, my main focus at this session, I'll talk a little bit about the student programs, but I'll probably focus more on the teacher resources. And um, please ask questions at any time. I am not, um, like this can be an informal conversation and some of this, if you're already a master teacher, go ahead and drop in the chat box, please. If you are already a master teacher of economics, personal finance, entrepreneurship or college and career readiness, I'd love to see that information. So I'll give you just a minute to drop that in the chat. And the other thing that we're going to do is I'll be using Nearpod as part of this presentation. And so I have just put in the chat box as well, the link for the Nearpod, if you'll go ahead and activate that as well. Um, some of it is just slide information, but then there's some interactive activities that I'm going to have you do while we're in there. So it is important that you go ahead and um, thanks. Carlos and Casey, I see y'all are already logged in to Nearpod. Eric and Josh and Rebecca. I'm not seeing any um, information in the chat box that any of you are already master teachers, which kind of surprises me because I thought that I recognized some of you from master teacher programs. Tara and Stanley and Joey and some of the others. Okay, yeah, jo Joel, I was like, I know for a fact that you are a master teacher of economics. So thanks for confirming that for me. Uh, I'm, Mandy, I'm sorry, see. I was yeah. a little late, but I missed the, is it a code for the- um... Yep, I'll cut and paste it's, it again, okay? Yes, it's I'm in, sorry, I apologize. It's all right, it's all right. It's in the chat box. Thanks for telling me that you needed that. Um, Mandy, you said CTE classes resource management. I think maybe you're telling me what you teach, which is fine. Um, are you also a master teacher of any kind yet? Not yet, okay. 
So that's actually a good thing that Joel seems to be our only master teacher because I'm going to be sharing some information on that with you. Okay, so what we're doing now is uh, we're logging into Nearpod and I am going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll get going. Um, the other thing that I would like to know in the chat is I'm assuming that most of you are either middle or high school teachers, but go ahead and drop that in the chat as well. Tell me what uh, what grades you teach and what school you're at. If you just tell me your school name, then I'll know. Uh, I'd love to know the schools that you, I know you're all in Rankin County, but I'd love to know the schools that y'all are y'all are at. So I've got several Florence and a Pilahatchee, uh, Richland and Brandon High and McLaurin. Brandon Middle School. Those of you that are at McLaurin High School is, um, let's see, uh, Eric, Eric, what's Eric's last name? Uh, Eric, really tall guy, um, very personable. I'm wondering if he's still there. I haven't heard from him in a little while. He was really active in our programs. He taught business. Eric Kite, yes. Is Eric still there? Is Eric? Okay, good, good. He's a superstar. Uh, okay, so let me share my screen with you. And you can also, as you know, um, just follow along on the Nearpod as well. And let's get a move on. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm Selena Schwartzfeger with the Mississippi Council on Econ Ed. Um, I am the president of that organization. Before taking that position, I was a classroom teacher for several years. So I taught at Clinton High School. It was a second career for me. I am a um, alternate route certified teacher. So I've, my background is in business and then received the alternate route certification and taught at Clinton High for a couple of years. And while I was there doing that, I was teaching personal finance and any and every business elective you can imagine. Um, I was active with the Mississippi Council on Econ Ed. And as a result, um, when my predecessor retired from MCEE, they approached me about applying for the job. And it took a little bit of coercing, but I finally did, and and I love it. I've been with the council for 11 years now, and I really love what we do because what we do is we support you all in your classrooms. So it's like the next best thing to actually being a classroom teacher is helping you all be the best classroom teachers that you can be. And so our mission is to increase economic and financial literacy in the state of Mississippi. And we do that through providing resources and training for K-12 educators. We want to empower you to be a really good teacher of economics, personal finance, entrepreneurship, and now college and career readiness. And in doing so, you, pr you prepare our students to be knowledgeable in those areas, which in turn creates a more prosperous state um, for uh, the state of Mississippi. So that is our mission statement. This is just some high level information. Here's my team, um, which you all may or may not know. On the left is Allie Hudson and on the right is Jessica Lewis. And so if you have received any information from us in the past, it could have been from any of the three of us. Um, generally, we are not the ones that actually do the professional development offerings. Uh, we have others that do that for us. We've got center directors around the state and then master teachers that we've prepared that we hire to offer professional development for y'all. And we achieve our mission in one of two ways. One, we either provide the professional development for you all and resources, or two, we offer student programs. And as I mentioned, as some of you are coming online, We'll focus mostly on the first piece as part of this session. And then if you come back this afternoon, we'll talk about the student competitions. So I've already said this several times, but I'll say it one more time. We've got, we really have three focus areas, but we've just launched into a fourth. 
And so if you teach economics, if you teach personal finance, you teach entrepreneurship or college or career readiness, we are your go-to organization to help you be better prepared to teach those content areas. And you may teach them as standalone courses or you may incorporate them into other classes. For example, um, one of you teaches math. I know that because you told me that uh, when we were chatting a little bit earlier. So you can easily teach economics, personal finance inside of a math classroom. Um, those of you that are at the middle school, you know, maybe you're teaching, tell me what your middle school topics are, because I saw several of you, uh, let me go back and get my chat. Oh, Keisha, go arrows. I'm seeing that now. She's a Clinton grad. Um, tell me, those of you that are at the middle school, what y'all are teaching. I see at the high school, we've got some AP econ, got, a, well, that's Joel. He's our AP econ um, teacher, government and econ, and what else do we have here? We got math. Tell me what you're teaching, just so I know who my audience is. Mississippi Studies, I think you can easily integrate um, economics into that. PE, interesting. I'd love to know how you're going to incorporate some of this into a PE course. Uh, it could be done. I, I, I'm sure of it. Um, ag includes some personal development sections like finance and family dynamics. Okay, good. So we've got a wide variety of, of educators here. And one of the things that we'll do towards the end, if we have time, is maybe have a discussion on how you will incorporate what you learn. All right. So um, I have a survey now in Nearpod, and I'm kind of a Nearpod newbie, so I'm hoping, are y'all seeing a survey right now on your screen? Yes, good. All right, so the question is, of the four content areas that I have mentioned to you, just tell me which one you're most interested in. And you've got four choices. And I'll give you a minute to uh, give me some feedback on that. So far, the personal finance is winning, which does not surprise me at all. Over half of y'all have not replied at all. So let me know that, that you're here and you're listening and participating. Okay, you got 10 seconds, 10 seconds to reply if you haven't already. All right, let me share the results with you so that you can see. Do you see the results? Yes, okay, good. So as you can see, um, personal finance is the most, is the topic that most of you are, in, that you're most interested in, which does not surprise me at all. Um, you know, it is, that is the one, one content area that I think you truly can incorporate into just about any subject that you're teaching. Um, and we're gonna, I'll, I will share with you some resources today on how you can do that. Now that doesn't mean that personal finance is any more important than the other three areas because the other three areas are just as important, you know, economics and entrepreneurship and college and career readiness. But, um, that does help me if I'm going to spend a little bit more time on one or the other, then that lets me know that the personal finance is where I should probably focus on most. Um, but we will start with economics because I am with the Mississippi Council on Economic Education. And so we were formed uh, in 2002, primarily back then to focus on economic education. And I have a question for you. Um, and now you should be able to see that it's on your screen. I'm asking you, what is economics? What do you think economics is? And if you'll answer that in Nearpod, I'd love to just get a feel for, and, and don't worry about being right or wrong. 
you know, I just, if you're wrong, then we'll, we'll get you straight. <laughs> but um, economics can be something different to different people. So go ahead and give me some feedback. Learning to use money wisely and how money systems work. How money works in the world pocketbook to world trade. How currency and goods move through our world. Handling money in different situations. How we satisfy unlimited wants and needs with scarce. So Joel's obviously an econ teacher. <laughs> Because he is spot on. Can you see each other's answers or can only I see them? We we can see what you're seeing on your screen. Okay, good. good. Oh, that's right, because I'm sharing my screen. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for... And is that, Baki, is that how I say your name? Yes, ma'am, perfect. Okay, good. Um production and money and branch of knowledge concerned with growth of and production of wealth. So uh, good job, y'all. Thanks for giving me your thoughts on what economics is, um, how people and society use resources around them to produce wants and, and needs. So Rebecca, that's the trading of goods and services, Carlos. Y'all, y'all, those y'all are pretty spot on. Um, the the definition of econ, of course, what Joel said was a shorter way to say this, but basically it's a social science concerned with production, distribution, and consumption of goods and services. And it, we look at how individuals and businesses and governments and nations make choices, how to allocate resources. And this, y'all, this is happening in our everyday lives. So it's extremely important. We also have our elected officials who are making decisions on our behalf um, that, are, that are based in economics. And in order to be um, educated voters, it's important that we understand what economics is and how it works because ultimately we're electing individuals who are going to make these decisions on our behalf as it relates to governments. Um, and so, Another way that I like to say it, especially if I'm talking to non-economists or non-economics teachers, is basically it's decision making because we we always have, we have limited resources and we have to make decisions on how we're going to distribute those resources. And so it's just all about making decisions. And it's not something that we should be afraid of. Um, in fact, if you jump in and start to enjoy economics or you know, study economics, I think you'll find things that you really enjoy. I was, I, I loved Freakonomics, you know, has anybody heard of Freakonomics, the, the book and the podcast? And um, it's where they, they look at everyday situations and just tell you how economics um, works with those everyday situations. And so I would encourage you of course, Joel and any other teacher of economics that's on here, you know, you have standards that you have to teach too, but the rest of you can be teaching some of this in a fun, interactive way, right? And getting our, our young people just to start thinking about the fact that I, I love just the simple thought of um, like opportunity cost, you know, what, what whenever you make a, a choice or decision, there is an opportunity cost and that's the next, next best choice that you had. And so um, it's not a bad idea to be thinking about life in those in those ways. And so let's talk about what MCE can do for you as a teacher of economics, whether it be at standalone or incorporating that into other subject matters. And there's going to be a little bit of replication here between economics and personal finance. So I'll probably take a deeper dive right here because it's the first one. And then when we get to the others, you know, you'll already know about them. But if you want to be um, a master teacher of any of these content areas, we can help you. We've got master teacher programs and 
as far as econ goes, there's the master teacher of economics program. I will tell you all of our master teacher programs have gone virtual, like virtual online. Um, we used to require you to be in person at different locations around the state, but thanks to the times that we're in, um, and didn't, uh, Joel, you didn't go re-go through the MTE this summer, did you? Or did you? We offered, um, yeah, I did. Okay, good, 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 good. So even if you were already a master teacher, we're allowing you to come back through those programs because, okay, what do you have to do to be qualified to a master teacher? You just have to take the course, okay? And um, I'm going to share with y'all at the end how you can register for anything that I'm talking to you about today. So the Master Teacher of Economics program is a 75 content hour program. Um, it is all virtual. Yep, somebody wanted to come in here. Uh, it's all virtual and we have switched this past summer to providing you with all literally every resource you need to teach economics. And those resources can be used in a virtual setting or in, in person or in a, um, you know, like a dual format course. Uh, that Master Teacher of Economics program comes with a $500 stipend at the end if you're, if you, when you successfully complete. And if you are teaching a standalone course in economics, there's an additional $500 stipend. So if you're a teacher of a one semester econ course, that's a thousand dollar stipend that you can receive. 7.5 CEUs for everybody. Um, there's no cost. Everything that I talked to you about during this hour, there is no cost to you or your school district or your school to participate in. Now, what you will find when you register for our programs is you're going to say, I understand if I don't complete this program, you're going to charge me $250 or $25. Um, but we don't charge you unless you don't complete. And we do that so that you have some skin in the game because people value what they, what they pay for. And since we don't charge you for things, um, that's our way of helping you understand the value of these, of these programs. Um, when you come out on the other side, you also can get the economics endorsement added to your license, assuming you meet some other criteria, which probably most of you do, um, but we can take a deeper dive on that. We have one day workshops. We've got one coming up uh, like August, I don't know, 9th, 10th, something like that. It's on a Saturday. Um, it's a five hour course. I'll show you that in a minute. We offer those throughout the school year. Uh, we have webinars all the time that are offered through our partner, the Council for Economic Education. And if you complete, they're generally an hour in length. And if you complete five or more of those, we can award you CEUs. Um, your resources that you're going to use in the classroom, and I'll show you these at the end, if you were to take the master teacher program, you would take a deep dive into these resources. But if you just need some help now before you teach the content, you can use Econ Ed Link and Econ Lowdown. Like I said, I'll show you those links momentarily. We partner with an organization called Foundation for Teaching Economics and one for Foundation for Economic Education. And they all have lesson plans as well that you can use. The Council for Economic Education Annual Conference is coming up in, at the end of September, early October. It's virtual again this year. Uh, we'd be happy to pay for any of you to attend that. So just, you know, you'll let me know if you're interested in that. It's spread out over a couple of days and, um, you know, offered at different times. So we'd love to uh, help you attend that by paying, by reimbursing you uh, for your attendance at that conference. And then we have just created a Canvas course in economics that, you know, we we have initially just launched with our master teachers that finished this summer, but I am happy to share that really with anybody who wants it. Um, We'd need to talk afterwards, but uh, you can just get that shell of a course 
and drop it down into your own Canvas account and use it to teach economics this, this school year. Um, so, and we'll be fine tuning that this fall and doing a, a hard launch for, it, for everybody that wants it. It's kind of a soft launch this fall so we can work out the kinks. All right, so that's economics and what we're offering there. Personal finance, which was the area that, you know, a lot of you were interested in. All right, what we have here is a collaboration board. Um, and I want you to tell me what is what is personal finance to you? I don't think we can put anything on the board. You can't. Not yet. Oh, there we that. go. There we go. All right. Handling debt, properly insured savings, your own money or lack of, learning ways to invest money, your money and how you use it, use of your money, learning to make wise decisions regarding in all situations, using the money you earn wisely and to manage it, how you manage your money, 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 <laughs> financial management, individual or family budgets. <laughs> the stuff I am always missing. <laughs> so I see tons of statements about money, obviously. Yes, it is money, right? Um, there are actually five standards, national standards for financial literacy. Um, let's see what else have we got down how you care for your money and managing money in a responsible way um, and making wise decisions with money. All of those things are, are very true. And um, if you were to look at the national standards for personal finance, which is what we work off of, there are, I believe there are five standards. We add one at the beginning because we think that decision-making is the, the crux of it all. And so we cover decision making and then we go into earning income. And as a lot of you have said, um, saving and investing and insuring and things of, of that nature. So as we train you and provide professional development on personal finance, we are going to take a deep dive into all of those areas. Um, thanks for participating in that y'all, you did a good job. Um, and as you notice, I'm not giving you a definition of personal finance um, because I guess it can be so many different things. So let me tell you how we can help you uh, with the master teacher, well, uh, to gain more knowledge on personal finance and the resources that you can use. So all the things that I told you about the master teacher of economics are true for personal finance as well. We've got a master teacher of personal finance program. It is... 45 content hours, so it's not quite as long as the econ program, but it is offered virtually um, through Canvas. So all of these master teacher programs start with a day or like a couple of hours of live orientation, and we set that date uh, and time at a, at a time that you all can attend. We just wrapped up all of our summer programs, but We'll be launching fall programs shortly. And if we get enough teachers wanting to take the courses during the fall semester, we will hold them again in the fall. So just know that. Um, we do one day workshops for personal finance. We have webinars that are offered once again through the Council for Economic Education, as well as Next Gen Personal Finance. I'm skipping around just a little bit here down to the right. Um, you can search Econ EdLink and Econ Lowdown for lesson plans that help you teach personal finance as well. I'm going to tell you this. There is no reason for anybody here to worry about, unless you just love lesson plan writing, there is no reason for you to have to write a lesson plan to teach economics or personal finance or entrepreneurship. There's no reason for that. 
where there are so many high quality resources out there that all you have to do is grab and pull down. Um, and as a teacher, like I remember, because this, this has been 11 years ago and I was teaching personal finance and that was before next gen personal finance was around. And I spent a ton of time looking for things to teach and, you know, reworking them so that they worked in my classroom. And when I learned about next gen personal finance about four years ago, it made me want to go back to the classroom to teach personal finance. It was that awesome where you, you can spend all your time sharing knowledge instead of having to create the resources. Um, but Econ EdLink and Econ Lowdown and Next Gen Personal Finance are all free places. We'll look at those in a minute. The stock market game, which we'll take a deeper dive into this afternoon. I want you to know we do have an online on-demand stock market game professional development workshop for you as a teacher that you can take uh, at your convenience. We'll look at that. Um, the Jumpstart Annual Conference is coming up. Theirs is in person. Um, they are taking scholarship applications right now for teachers that want to attend. So I would encourage you, um, if you're a master teacher personal finance, which I don't think we have any on this call, but we will be sending two master teachers of personal finance to that conference at no cost, which is actually an, an incentive to maybe go through that program at some point so that you can be considered at the state level for a full scholarship to that in-person conference. It's in Washington, DC in November. Um, but we'll look at, if we have time, we can look at that and I can show you how to apply for a scholarship to attend that conference. And then we also have created a Canvas course in personal finance for you as a teacher to use. Um, and I'm happy to share that with anybody who's interested. So once again, you don't have to recreate the wheel. It's like personal finance in a box. Then we've got entrepreneurship, which we have less takers of um, than we do, you know, our, the first two content areas. It's a little bit harder to figure out how to incorporate that inside of other subject areas. Um, but I'm looking like just right here in front of my face, Stanley, you told me you teach entrepreneurship. So we do have teachers who are teaching standalone courses in entrepreneurship. Alternatively, you can just figure out how to make it work inside your course. And so there's a master teacher of entrepreneurship program. It's 75 content hours um, online, on demand, works the same way with the stipend that we're paying upon completion. I'm going to tell you all this. I have funding right now where each of those master teacher programs receive $500 stipends. It won't always be that way. In fact, uh, that funding will probably run out next year. So if you are interested in taking one of those programs, now is the time. I'm not saying we won't offer a stipend at all, but it won't necessarily be $500. So um, right now, all four of the master teacher programs have $500 stipends associated with them. Uh, we've got some one-day workshops for entrepreneurship. There are webinars, once again, that are offered by the Council for Econ Ed. And you can find those inside of Econ Ed Link. Um, Econ Lowdown has lesson plans. We have two online, on-demand, like five-hour workshops that are called Project-Based Entrepreneurship and Pathways to Entrepreneurship. The uh, Pathways to Entrepreneurship is for special education teachers. The project-based entrepreneurship is for general ed teachers. And then um, you can also access lesson plans through Youth Entrepreneurs. And we have created that Canvas course in entrepreneurship that teachers can use in their classrooms. And if you're thinking, you know what? I don't use Canvas at my school. My school uses, my, uses Schoology or we're a Google, you know, um, Google school or whatever, you can still copy and paste those lessons, the activities and whatnot out of Canvas into whatever learning management system you use. And um, we have some technology support that'll help you do that. And then the last piece that we've recently picked up is college and career readiness. Um, you may or may not know 
that starting with this school year, all students, all high school students have to have college and career readiness to graduate from high school, which is an awesome, awesome thing. Um, it is a one-year course and it covers many, many things that we consider to be personal finance in nature, which is why we have an interest in college and career readiness. Um, the students can, this is so that I'm being, uh, so that you know, students can also get this content through taking JROTC three and four or work-based learning. So there are some other ways in addition to taking what might be at your school called college and career readiness that they can get the content. Um, but we launched in partnership with Get to College, we launched a master teacher of college and career readiness program this summer. We had approximately 140 teachers that took that class with us. It was a 45 hour course. We're going to be making some revisions to that and actually expanding it because there were some things that we didn't get to cover. So when we do that um, this fall, I've given the instructors the leeway to increase it to as many as 75 hours if they need it. Um, so if you're teaching college and career readiness and you didn't get in on that class this, this summer or it's something that you would like to teach moving forward, then be on the lookout for that program. All right, and so now let's talk a little bit about um, our student activities. And as I mentioned, we'll take a deeper dive this afternoon into these. But if you were teaching economics in any of your classes, we would just love, love, love for you to have your students compete in the economics challenge. Um, the way, and I'm going to talk about econ challenge and personal finance challenge together because they work the same way. So if you're teaching personal finance in any of your courses, we would love, love, love for you to have your kids participate in the personal finance challenge. So these are offered each year, there are three opportunities during the school year for your students to qualify for the state competition. And it's done in the classroom, so it's online. It's just a multiple choice exam in either economics or personal finance. Economics, uh, well, we're actually relaunching the middle school competition there too. So middle or high school as well, same for personal finance, middle or high school. So we offer three times during the school year so that depending on whether you're teaching in, in nine week increments or maybe you're teaching um, econ in the fall and not in the spring or vice versa, we don't wanna have any excuses for y'all to not have your kids participate in these things. And so in October, we give you a two week period and all you have to do is pick one class period to have your students do the online test. So two weeks in October to choose from, two weeks in December, two weeks in March. Um, the March one, because we're always fighting against spring break, you know, you just have, that's why we do two weeks. So that if you're on spring break one week, you can have your kids compete the other week. And, um, so you do the, you can actually, you can have your kids participate all three times. Like you don't have to just pick one. So maybe you're teaching personal finance in the fall and you want them to test in October and December because what we know is that just getting comfortable with the format sometimes is half the battle. And so they could test in October and test again in December. Um, love for y'all to do that. Then what we do is we take the highest performing teams from the regions in the division. So they're, we'll get into that this afternoon, but we bring the highest scoring um, teams to the state competition in April. And there they can earn college scholarships. Uh, stock market game, super fun competition that's offered every fall and every spring. There are trading sessions that last 13 weeks and, but you don't have to play the whole 13 weeks. So depending on what your lesson plan layout looks like, um, you can pick and choose the weeks that you want your students to participate in that. And we do winning, we do prizes for those at the end of each semester. 
Hey, Selena. Yes. All right. Sorry for to interrupt, but please. Uh, I, I forget um, how many uh, students do you recommend in the challenges? How many students do you recommend uh, putting on a team? Okay, good question. So you have to have three, but you can have four. Um, and the reason it works that way is because the way they get to the to the final competition is the three highest scores are combined. So if there's four kids on the team, we just drop the fourth score. Um, and I'm gonna tell y'all, when I was a teacher, I was very strategic about this, you know? We, we think about our, think about athletics. Got a PE coach on here. You got an athletic mind, you know? You're in it to win it, right? I mean, that's, right. in addition, right? In, in addition to providing the opportunity, for all, all of our kids, which is so important. It's super important, I think, for them to have the opportunity to compete academically. But at the same time, like you wanna win, I wanted to win. And so I did not let my kids pick their own teams. <laughs> I put them on teams and I made sure that I had what I considered all, all of my students competed. But in each class, you know, I had at least one what I would consider really competitive team that I, I created on purpose. And um, I'm not going to brag, but I will tell you this. I had a team that won each time we competed for the region, not for the, we didn't win statewide, but we were regional winners. And it was because I was strategic about that. And um, so I encourage you to do thing. And another kind of nice little thing is just competing. I'm not sure that we've ever done this before, but we're definitely going to do this moving forward. We can do certificates uh, for your students or at least give you the ability to print certificates for your students that they can put into their portfolios. And hopefully I can tell you for a fact that the college and career courses that they're taking they should be putting together portfolios where things like certificates matter, you know, because they prove participation in academic competition. And so let that be um, an incentive for you to have your students do one of these competitions. Um, in addition to the fact that they have the opportunity to win college scholarships if they advance to the finals, but you know, that's going to be an elite group of kids. And so not everybody's gonna advance to that point but still there's value to them understanding why they should compete academically. Um, and you know, you could do your own classroom based prizes because you will know as a teacher what the scores are for your students. Oh, let me tell you this. I had a teacher tell me a couple summers ago, it was an econ teacher and they're not here, um, but he said, and I mean, he didn't teach at rank for Rankin County. He said, um, I don't do the econ challenge because if my students don't do well, I don't want to be embarrassed. And I told him, I was like, listen, man, the only people that see your scores are you and me. And I'm not going to tell anybody. <laughs> so unless you're, unless you have winning students. And so don't let that be a hindrance to competing. Um, and, you know, the other thing is uh, sometimes we invite, um, long card teams, you know, even if you're not one of the top scoring teams in your region for different reasons, we'll invite wild card teams. So you just never know, you might end up at the state challenge anyway. Um, okay, just keeping time, you know, we've got 15 minutes basically left uh, to talk. Okay, so some other student activities uh, that we offer. This would only matter to you if you're a special education teacher, and I don't know that we have any here today, but Danny Dollar Academy, um, actually, here's the book. And the reason, so it's an elementary school program that we did last year, but we've got funding this year to launch it for our special education teachers and students, middle and high school because what we know is that um, reading is a challenge for our, a lot of our children that um, have special needs. 
And so the book is written at a 3.5 reading level, um, but we're gonna use it in our special education classrooms. And it teaches economics, personal finance, entrepreneurship, and there's a competition associated with it at the end of the day. Um, we also do Rockonomics, which is a fun competition where kids can take what they've learned in either personal finance or economics and take a popular, well, it doesn't have to be a popular song, but they usually do pick one and they write their own lyrics um, and then they perform it in video and you submit it to us. I used to use something like that as my final exam in my personal finance classes because it took everything that they learned during the semester and incorporated it into one final project. So think about that. You know, you can use it as a test score, even if, if you can't use it as a final exam for whatever reason, you could use it as, as a test score. Um, all of these things, all of these challenges as a teacher, you will have access to their, to their scores. And so if you wanted to use it as a graded assignment in the classroom, you can do that. And then the last student competition that I'll just touch on, it's not ours, and I don't, but it's, uh, it belongs to the USM Center for Econ Ed, and it's the SCP, the Southern Entrepreneurship Program, and it's super awesome. So if you happen to be teaching entrepreneurship, uh, that's something to check out. All right, so I told you I was going to show you some of these resources. So what you have here, and let's see, I will also, put this in the chat, is the website for the Mississippi Council on Econ Ed, mscee.org. And when I'm talking about all of these workshops that you can sign up for and master teacher programs, let's see if this works. It does, okay. So on the workshops page, of our website, you'll see we, we break it out by uh, school level. And so you'll find some things in all places, but let's just go to the high school workshops. And you can see here all of the different things that we are, that we offer on a regular basis. If you were to click on uh, Master Teacher of Personal Finance right now, you'll see registration is not open because we haven't set the dates yet for the fall, but as soon as we do, then you would be able to register right here. Um, the stock market game is one of those things that I mentioned that is online on demand. So you would click register right there and it would take you to this form and you fill it out and then we give you access to the course. So that's how that works. Um, We've got one live, it's virtual, but it's a live workshop coming up soon, Money, the True Story of a Made-Up Thing. Uh, let's see, August 14th is when this is. Super cool because um, Jacob Goldstein, who is the co-host of NPR's Planet Money, is going to be one of the presenters. And so we're partnering with a couple of other state councils to offer this for y'all. I'd encourage you to check that out. Let's go back here. Um, resources is another place on our website that you can go check out. I talked to y'all about Econ EdLink and um, what was the other one? Let's just click on Econ EdLink. So that's a, a resource that's offered by our partner, the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. And everything you need is here. You would just click there and it takes you straight to that website. Tons of lesson plans there. All right, so that's our website. I encourage you to go play around with that. All right, Econ EdLink is um, offered through the Council for Economic Education. You can create your own teacher account here. And then the cool thing about Econ Ed Link is that it allows you to search by what you're interested in. So you, uh, let's say personal finance should be one of these here. 
or insurance. Let's see. Risk and return. That would be a personal finance issue or topic. And say you wanted a video that talked about that. You can click on that. Um, and then you just hit apply. And what comes up will be all of these different resources that you can use to teach about risk and return. And you can see it also sorts that out by grade level. And that was something else that you can click over here. Um, that should be something here that you can sort on. So anyway, super awesome. All of these lesson plans, videos, games, things of that nature that you can use. This is Econ Lowdown. This is the Federal Reserve Bank resource that once again, you set up your own account, um, videos, games, lesson plans, all the things you could ever want. Next Gen Personal Finance. So this is the bomb diggity when it comes to personal finance education. Let's go check this out. So they have um, games and interactives at Next Gen Personal Finance. Their curriculum, you can go sort by, if you were teaching a nine week course or a semester course, you can, there's a middle school course here that you can um, check out. Alternatively, if you just wanted to find what they had based on a particular unit, uh, one of the things that a lot of people talked about when I asked you what was personal finance, there was a lot of talk about saving. Okay, so let's click on the saving and see what happens. You have activities, you have case studies, you have uh, thin cat Fridays, questions of the day. So if you need bell ringers, you can get that here. You can also take a deeper dive. Everything here is a Google Doc. And so you can just copy uh, and paste it down onto your, into your system and use it that way. Let's take a look at uh, a Google Doc. If you're going to use NextGen Personal Finance, you will want to sign up for a teacher account because that's how you get the answer keys. And what they'll do is when you request um, a teacher account, they'll verify that you are indeed a teacher. Of course, if you have uh, one thing, they'll do, so you'll use your teacher, usually use your school email address, but they'll go do things like check your school website and just make sure that you're a teacher before they give you that access because what they don't want is all the students out there having access to the answer keys. But um, these are just so super awesome. You can even see it tells you out to the right, like how long each of these pieces should take if you're using them in your classroom. Uh, some really nice interactive things. And we could do a whole hour on next-gen personal finance resources. So right now, all I have time to do is just kind of show it to you. And then one of the other resources that I, I talked about was youth entrepreneurs. So if you're teaching, if you want to teach entrepreneurship, um, let's go check this out. They're a partner organization of ours. And um, let's see here. They are in the process of rebranding and changing their, their content. Okay. See, I told you we're evolved. Say hello to Empowered, a new organization from your friends. Um, so I haven't actually gone to their website yet, but basically they have lesson plans that work in eight found out eight foundational values really wants us to go to empowers um but there are lesson plans here that you can use as well okay to teach you know about the entrepreneurial mindset or if you want to teach about the economics of entrepreneurship all right um that's in there as well And all of these resources, you're like, oh my gosh, that's so much. I don't even know where to start. 
Well, we, if you took any of the master teacher programs, we would take a super deep dive in all of these resources. Um, this is how you get in touch with us. If, if you have questions later, I've already put the website in the, in the chat. I will also um, put the email address, mse at millsaps.edu. Uh, we are on the Millsaps College campus, which is why that's part of our email address. But we're very active on Facebook, a little bit less so on Twitter and Instagram. But if you're a face, if you're a social media user, I would really appreciate you going and following us um, on any of those social media platforms. The phone number that's there is our main line. If you need to talk to us about anything. Um, I would suggest, you know, taking a deep dive on our website first, and then if there are questions that you have, you can email or call. If you call that number, you'll get Jessica Lewis. She's our program coordinator, and she'll help you out. Um, let's see, there was one other. Oh, if, you're, if you don't already get our What's Up Wednesday newsletter, which obviously comes out every Wednesday, which is why it's called that. We do not uh, send, we try not to send you a lot of repetitive information. Like we're not going to tell you about the same thing week after week after week. We generally have new content, but we do have new content most weeks because we offer so many different programs and workshops and things like that. I would encourage you to go to our homepage, mscee.org, and come down here and subscribe to email updates. And then you'll just fill that out and you'll get the What's Up Wednesday newsletter from us. You're like, Selena, how am I going to know when the registration goes live for master teacher programs? This is how you will know because we will tell you if you get our What's Up Wednesday, we'll tell you when we launch registration for the different th things that we do. Um, okay, so we got five minutes left. Tell me what questions or comments do you all have? You have ideas on how you're going to use some of this in your classroom. Feel free to share that. And you can either unmute and talk to me or you can put it in the chat. I believe you just gave us a plethora of resources to use this year. I did. I'm glad, I'm glad that you were here to receive it. What else? Other thoughts or questions I must have go ahead uh, I was going to ask did you say that the master teacher uh, course is entirely online it is okay um, it is entirely online which you know, I'm in the business of removing barriers. That, that's, you know, if you think about what do I do every day that I go to work, and even when I'm thinking about things on the weekends, I'm thinking, how can I remove barriers to, to things, whatever those things are, you know? And um, whether it's access to education or, or knowledge or whatever. And so, we were already doing some things virtually before last year, but last year really allowed us the opportunity and kind of the excuse to be quite honest, to go into a more, a more virtual setting, which for you as a teacher, you know, I mean, there's a good and bad side of everything, the, but the good side is, is that you can literally do it from wherever you are, you know, and historically back in the early days, you had to come spend you know, a week with us in Jackson for during the summer. And now you don't have to do that anymore. And when we offer these master teacher programs in the summer, we will stretch them out over several months because we know that your time is limited between teaching and all the other, you know, family responsibilities. And, you know, some of you may be coaches and, and you have those responsibilities. Um, are we going to get a way to go back and look through all these resources? Um, so I, oh, why is Eric Hype just coming in here? Did he hear that I was going to brag on him? <laughs> Eric, 
You're right here at the end. I was bragging on you earlier. I miss you. I haven't seen you in so long. Uh, uh, hey. Here I am. Okay. Hello, my friend. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I've got some of your colleagues on here with me. Uh, Coach Coughlin on here. Yeah. 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 So um, I'm. it's nice to see you. Um, Eric is Eric is a superstar and he's been involved with us for a lot of years. So, but the question was, how are we going to get access to these resources? Everything that I talked to you about, you should be able to find a link on our webpage, okay? MSCEE.org and go to that resources page. Um, we only have one minute left and I know y'all want a code from me. Let me give you that code. If you're still in Nearpod, um, it's there. Let's see, I'm going to cut and paste this as well into the chat. I think you need this maybe for CEUs or something. Um, session three, getting to know MCEE 2021-147. That's your code for today, okay? But um, please just reach out to me. If you can't find what you need on our website, drop me an email. Call me, whatever. Uh, it is my job to make your life easier <laughs> and to make it more fun for you to teach these content areas. And um, I, go, I take that real seriously. So let me do a public service announcement. Do it. Uh, listen, uh, whoever you are online, y'all think about get involved with Mississippi Council of Economic Education. It is the best, most <laughs> fantastic PD you will ever be a part of. I mean, what PD pays you to go to the <laughs> <laughs> And then I don't let those, those don't get tossed started talking about the food. Uh, they they uh, feed you quite well. Uh, and the, uh, the information and materials, fantastic. You're gonna love it. I would have done it this summer, uh, Selena, except I was, I'm in grad school and so I couldn't. Oh, good for you. No way I could work it all out. I wanted to, I promise I wanted to. And uh, Yeah, yeah, good it. for you, Eric. Oh. Yes, yeah. but, uh, yes, anyone contact me about it. If you want somebody, Eric Hyde, I mean, you know, uh, Mike Lauren, uh, uh, but I'm telling you, you'll love this thing. The, the, the materials they give you, woo, uh, <laughs> it's going to change the teaching forever. You're going to love it. Love it. Uh, thank you, Eric. Right. Well, y'all, we were supposed to end at 1145 and it's 1146. So we are done. Um, but you know how to find me, okay? Y'all have a great day, and maybe I'll see you this afternoon. All right. Bye, Selena. Bye. bye, bye. bye. Hey, Selena. Hey. One quick question. Um, yeah. I, I did the uh, 2.0 version this summer and, and finished it. I've been out of town, oh, and I haven't set up my canvas or anything like that, so I haven't transferred any of that stuff over. I'm still working on that. I will. I already uh, missed all of them, so I might as well not... And uh, uh, but also, uh, what would I need to do to uh, get the seven point five CEUs for that? So that's automatic. Is once you complete the course, um, and, uh, and uh, you, yeah, we we have to do the the uh, challenge. That's right. I forgot about that. We're gonna give you your CEUs before that. Oh, like okay. we're, we we don't hold them for that. I got you. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so we have 30 days post-program to get you your stipend, your CEU certificate, your master teacher, master teacher completion certificate, yeah. um, and all of that. Although yeah. I'm thinking for MTE that that might, the email might have already gone out to you with that information on. In fact, I know it has. Okay. So I'll, check I'll, your email. Yeah, I I I got it, and I, but I haven't had a chance to to look at it. So I'll, okay, I'll, I'll, it's it's on there. I'll get it. Okay, right. your your CEU certificate is probably in that email, Excellent. and then like I said, the um the stipend checks will be written this month. Um, I'm drawing down. This is more than you asked for, but I'm drawing down right. some money to cover those checks um, right. from the funder. So yeah. as soon as the funder provides those funds, then um, those payments will go out. Fantastic. Appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate you. See you later.